Live from Dog Fancy Studios in Eddieville, Kentucky, it's time for another episode of the Evolution of Survivor Strategy. Tonight, we're talking about Survivor Cambodia, Second Chances, one of the most exciting and one of the next evolutions of Survivor Strategy. Your host, Darth Easy's. Hello, Easy Nation. Welcome to another episode of Darth Easy's Evolution of Survivor Strategy. I hope everyone's having a very good week. And I'm sad because, you know, I'm just, I'm getting ready to end my vacation. And uh, I really spent the last two days watching Survivor Cambodia and I forgot how good the season. I knew the season was good, but I was so looking forward to rewatching Cambodia. And it was just as good on a rewatch as when I first watched the season because I love the season. So, Survivor Second Chances. So, one thing I really like about it is that we're getting players that have only played one time. And the idea of, it's kind of like the first All-Stars. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the first All-Stars, just it's not as predictable as the first All-Star season was. And you bring in people who you're going to, you're bringing them back. Is history going to repeat itself? And we're only getting players that played one time. And that's why it's called Second Chance. And I think this is something to talk about probably at the end. But I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it now. I think this would be great to do it. I would think eventually they should do another second chances because like we see in a few seasons later in Survivor Game Changers and you see players that play four times and three times, you're just like at a point it just becomes too much. But to see these players that are like, okay, can they can they can they get their can they redeem themselves from that failure? Are they gonna are they gonna make the same mistakes they did last time? I think it makes incredible intriguing television to watch. So okay, so we got the we got the tries, we got divided up, and I like the opening of the of the of the first episode where it kinda of goes through all these players and you see all these flashbacks of how people mess up from like, you know, uh, Steven taking JT, Kelly Wiggler flo- losing to Richard Hatch, Andrew Savage getting blindsided by uh, by Johnny Fairplay. I mean, so many cool little Survivor flashbacks. Sierra drawing rocks. I mean, you see so many great moments. And I think this is like, I think this is probably, maybe, <sighs> okay, that's a little hard one. This might be the second best returning players to ever come back for a survivor because I think the best would have to be winners at war just because they've all winners and it's the it's just it's just the Super Bowl of survivor seasons and I'll get to that in I'm, I'm not that far away from winners at war really so I like I said I think the characters this season are incredible and you know not there's not one player I don't like on this season, and you know there are all kinds of players. And I like how this season you have old school players, you have new school players, and the old school players are they going to be able to adapt to the new school thinking? Like Jeff Varner, like at the first vote, he votes out Vetus, and he said, "I did this to wake up my old school players." He said, "It's time to wake up. It's time to play this game." Telling players like Terry Dietz who he needs to learn how to play a modern day Survivor season. And it's a complete wake-up call for him, and it totally works out for him. Because, you know, it has that moment at the second in the second episode. He thinks he's on the bottom. Abby Maria, acting Abby Maria, she's, a little, she's acting a little crazy. And Terry just gives her a little opening, just gives uh, her a hug and someone to talk to, and he built an ally. And one thing I really like about the season, I like the multiple swaps. I like the, like... Some the one thing I don't like about the swaps was it screwed a player like Jeff Barner because I think Jeff Barner first two episodes that was the player I was talking most about. I was like, Man, Jeff Barner playing a hell of a game right now. I mean, he's just doing an incredible job. But then you know he gets swapped into he gets swap screwed, but he also does it to himself because if he had just stayed the course, probably somebody like your probably Andrew Savage or somebody like Tasha gets voted out or early but one thing i really like about the season and i think you'll see you see survivor doing this multiple more times doing the multiple swaps doing the it completely prevents a pagongan because like i said in many episodes pagongans are boring and 
they want more season where everybody knows each other. They, there's a relationship there. It's like, okay, I was on this tribe with this person. I was on this tribe with this person. I was on tribe with this person. So there's no more of those things of tribal lines. And that's one thing this season created. It created the voting blocks. The voting, we, you know, from Survivor Seasons Borneo all the way up to Worlds Apart. You get on a tribe. You build these alliances. Richard Hatch, Sue Hawk, Rudy, Killy's Wiggler formed this, the, the, the Taki Alliance and took out Pagong. And ever since then, people have built these alliances. And it was completely different this season. The alliances evolved into what will be known as these voting blocks going forward into Survivor. Maybe not after next season because technically next season is the 31st season because this is actually recorded 32. But going after you get past next season, this is the common form of Survivor. It's not about these... We get these. We get this core group of alliance together. We're going to take out the other side. No, you're going to want to get these votes... I was like, okay, these three votes are together. This is a voting block. Every every vote is a whole new ball game. It's just like it's like a it's like watching a ball game. Every alliance is on its own. Like as soon as you finish that one game, okay, now we gotta play a whole other team that plays a completely different style. We gotta figure out: are we gonna be able to hit the ball to say? Are we gonna are we gonna or we not? Are we gonna have to rely more on our defense? So I think it completely. I think this season completely evolutionized the of Survivor. And for someone that has been talking about Survivor strategy for for the last ten months, it, it this season is just it's it's just like popcorn to me. And so, you know, the voting blocks, and like I said, it doesn't matter who was on Takeo, who was on Bayon. There are so many mixture things in this season. And it was cool seeing characters grow. It's like, it was awesome watching Spencer again, because I really enjoyed Spencer the first time he played in Survivor Kageon. And, you know, in, in uh, Spencer's thing... You know, in the first season, he was Charlie Brown. He was always on the bottom. He could, and whenever he anything was starting to go good, the football would get taken away from him. And you, and then Spencer, he's in that. He is in that same mode the first half of the. And then you have other players like Shireen, or they're basically repeating the same. They're repeating the same stories that happened to him the last season. And then Spencer, once he gets past. The the vote where okay so we're at the we're at the tri swap we go back we go from three tribes to two tribes he has to rely on Cass somebody he said Cass zero percent chance of winning the game Cass has to like can I trust Spencer can I move forward with him do I want to try to take control of this game and after that point it was detrimental to Cass's game Cass most likely should have voted out Spencer that's all there is to it. But thank God she didn't because I think this season is a lot more exciting when she does that. Because Cass turns back into chaos Cass mode a little bit. And Spencer, at that point, is playing the middle game. And then he completely runs away with the game. I think Spencer is a little hard on himself. And I think the jury was a little hard on him. Because I think Spencer played an incredible game this season. I just thought his, I thought his gameplay was totally worthy of this season and I, like I said I just I just really enjoyed this season of, of watching Spitzer play and then you have players like Tasha who are playing a very good social game and then like even players like Joe where Joe you know Joe wins the four viewities and then he is vulnerable and I like the moments of Fishback where Fishback is in the whole mindset from you know in Survivor Tokushins he waited too long and he didn't have an opportunity to take out JT and this time he he was he compared himself to Captain Ahab and uh, that Joe was his Moby Dick and he was so focused on not repeating the same mistakes that he couldn't see he couldn't see the forest from the trees and to take out Spence and took out Stephen and you know there was this great moment in the like I love and also we add more advantages like I said in the last episode whenever we introduced the vote we introduced the extra vote that Dan had didn't play it right. Steven gets a vote steal. He can steal somebody's vote. He steals Joe's vote. And it's a funny moment whenever he votes Joe. He's like, I've waited 29 days. I'm just going to take a moment and just and celebrate it. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> it's just like, you're just like, oh, come on, man. Jeremy, I think, plays a master class game this season. And, you know, it's just, he has his shirts. And then off the shields, 
Like, there are so many things to talk about this season, but him having Joe, having Andrew Savage, having Fishback, having Spencer, those people are going to always look, look more like a bigger target because that was his problem in Survivor San Juan del Sur. And I think he learned his lesson in San Juan del Sur because if he had taken out Josh probably that early... And he probably wouldn't have been targeted as early as he was. But he was looked at as such a big threat. And so this time around, he decided he needed to keep the bigger threats alive. Keep the targets alive. That way they won't go after Jeremy. And you know, it was a, it was a touching moment. And then, Kelly Wentworth. Like, so we were, I remember back uh, during the original run of Survivor, uh, at the end of Worlds Apart, when they had the cast, you could vote... I didn't vote for Kelly Wentworth because personally, I didn't like San Juan del Sur. I just, I, it was a season I didn't care for at the time. And really, beyond to, I didn't remember Kelly Wentworth. And when I went back and watched San Juan del Sur a couple episodes ago, I, she was barely in the season. Like, she was in a few episodes, and you're like, and then, because you know, knowing what I know now from watching her play, after watching her play in Cambodia and watching her play in Survivor uh, Edge of Extinction, I know what the game is there. And it was it was impressive to watch uh, Kelly's game this uh, season. The idol, when uh, they all voted for Kelly, nine votes, she plays the idol, and Andrew Savage gets voted out. Feel bad for Savage. If they do another All-Star season, I would love to see Andrew Savage play again because I do take, there were moments where I think if Savage doesn't get voted out, and I think Savage could make a deep run in this game, I don't, and it would have been very interesting to watch. But it was such a great moment whenever she pulls that idol out. Nine votes go on her, and they, I'm like, how did they not split the votes? There was only three of them on that side. I mean, they're just like, what the crap, guys? Um, so, okay, now we gotta keep moving on to, there's so much more to talk about, really. So we get to the final six. And Kimmy is, like, telling Kelly, Kelly Wentworth says, I have a plan. I want to, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell Jeremy and Spencer and Tasha, we're going to split the votes, and, and me, you, and Keith, we're going to vote, we're going to blindside Jeremy. Because she knows she can't beat Jeremy in the end. So she has to start making a resume for herself. And I love that. And I will, I want to talk one little quick thing about Kimmy. I, it sucked that we didn't get to see Kimmy and Jeff Barner play together because that would have been a great moment. It been the Kobe. It would have been the Kobe and Jerry moment from Survivor All Stars and Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Just that kind of relationship because they had a rocky relationship in Survivor Australia, and I think it would have been interesting to see them play. Could they have played together? It would have been interesting to watch. Getting back to Kimmy, Kimmy has his plan. She wants to blast out Jeremy and Spencer. I mean, say what you want about Spencer, but Spencer's the one that saw this coming. Spencer and Tasha, they saw, he's like, I don't trust Kimmy. Uh, I just, I just have, a, I, I have a bad feeling about this. And Jerry doesn't want to believe it. He doesn't want to believe it. And then, one of the great moments is when they both play their idols. No votes. First time in Survivor history, there is no votes. They go for the revote. It's between Kimmy and Tasha. And it's either... Uh, and then, you know, once we get to a revote and it's still the same vote, then we're deadlock. So what happens after a deadlock? The people who, if the four people can't agree on who's going home, then we have to draw rocks. Well, in this case, there is no draw rocks because you have Spencer. He has the immunity. You have Jeremy. He played the immunity idol. You have Wentworth. who played the idol. Kim, or Kimmy and Tasha are even believe it poor old Keith Dell going home and I think he just I, I remember listening to an old interview with uh with uh Rob Sesternino and Kelly Whitworth and <laughs> I remember Kelly said I think Keith was so confused he just wanted to go in go home and drink beer <laughs> like he was just he was just, uh, he was just like done because you know we all know Keith doesn't know the strategy part of the game so yeah, it made for such a great moment. Like, there's a moment that's kind of similar to it in Game Changers, but I'll, I think that's a little more of a production error than error than anything. I'll get to it when we get to that point. So overall, guys, Survivor Kayon Second Chance I think is one of the most fun seasons to rewatch. Has some great moments. One of my favorite, my second favorite return player season so far. And I don't know. I mean. There are moments I like it, There are, and it has a great ending to it. So, 
I don't know. I really, I, this season I think has some great moments and I love this season. So guys, that ends this episode of the Evolution of Survivor Strategy. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Guys, make sure you click that like button, subscribe to see more, tell your friends about Easy Nation. Until next time, all too easy. Peace.